Hello, everybody. This is Alia, the Love Coach. We are meeting for another Love Circle, and I am so excited about today's topic. I'm excited about every topic, but today we are talking about learning to validate yourself. Now, this is a topic uh, when we just hear of it, all of a sudden we're like, well, I don't, I don't need other people validation. I am fine just the way I am. But I'm going to challenge you to take your guard down and get very honest with yourself. Because if we don't become honest with ourselves, we never change. We keep our walls around us and we keep thinking we're doing okay emotionally while we are not. So this is all about our emotional well-being, all about our inner world, how we see inside, what goes on in our mind that is completely invisible to anyone else in this world, including your partner. No one can see your thought but you yourself. So that's that's the area that we are working on. So first, let's get into, so I have three sections of today's talk. Why, why do we need to learn to validate ourselves? And, you know, kind of like the, the four ways that you can jump into that. And how do you know you actually got to that place? Because uh, we want to grow. We all want to grow. But we also want to have those measuring blocks where, you know, okay, did I grow? Or, or you're just running, running, running and never actually becoming uh, good enough to run a marathon. So we want to make sure that we are getting to a place where there is a validation within us. Yes, growth has happened. And we are not just suppressing or masking our own inner environment just by, you know, sheer positivity or trying to be happy. That is that is how I like to work. So let's get into why why do we need to learn how to validate ourselves. So the first one is if I am seeking validation from another person that means that person can control me. So let's say if um I'm going to give you a light example and a heavy example. So the light example is let's say I'm a kid, let's say we are in middle school and um I really want to eat ice cream, but I don't have any allowance on me. I It's Thursday. I already spent everything, but you have some extra money on you and I need that ice cream from you. And I'm like, can you buy me that ice cream? And then you're just like, well, I got this person under my teeth. I can make them do whatever. You're like, well, I'll get you ice cream if you do my homework, if you do this for me, if you do that for me. Because I need ice cream so bad, I am willing to do all that for you. So this is just an example. When we were young, we all have experienced one version or another of that. But when we are adult, we are doing exactly the same thing, but in a different way. When I need your validation to tell me, hey, you're good enough. Hey, you're you're a strong woman. Hey, you're a beautiful woman. Hey, you cook really good. Hey, I like the way you look. When I need all of that from you, because I'm not able to give it to myself, you get to control me. That's exactly how we create codependent relationships. Then I don't even know how to live without you. And I lived in one. So that is, that is a part that I, I mastered really well. I have to be dependent on someone else emotionally. So when I cannot be free, that, that person has power over me. So they can kind of manipulate me to do things that I maybe don't want to do. And maybe I hate myself for doing that later. So that is how it's, that's one of the reasons it's very important to learn how to validate yourself. Let's get into the next one. When we are seeking validation outside of us, We abandon our true self. When I am bending backward, try to make someone happy just so they can say at the end of the day, oh my God, she's such a wonderful woman. She cooks really good food. She is such a good host. When I am looking for those words to fill me, I am going to bend backward and I am going to abandon my true self. What is our true self? True self is the soul that came in this body in this worldly experience to do something very specific. We all have that within us and we might be already doing it. We might not be doing it. 
most of us pick our work or our path or our career based on external influences, based on this is what my parents are suggesting. Well, I'm really good in bio. Uh, I should go to med school, stuff like that. That's how we choose. We are not really connected with our true self. And also we are not showing up in our relationship in an authentic way either. And the the next reason, there's four reasons that I wrote down. There's there's so many reasons why we should learn to validate ourselves. There would be always a fear of losing our relationship. So fear of loss would always be there when you are not validating yourself. So it would be losing your family, it would be losing your partner, losing your kids. Not in terms of like, you know, losing them to death or something else in terms of like, what if they don't like me anymore? What if they reject me? What if they cast me out of the family? So when we are seeking validation from other people, we become people pleaser. We are always putting fires, putting off fires that, you know, I I just wanted to stay, you know, calm. We are the peacekeeper of the family. And in taking up all those roles and acting out of fear, again, we are, we are not acting out of love because the opposite of fear is love. That's when we are in harmony with ourselves and we can be in harmony with other people. But if you're afraid that, you know, if I don't say the right thing, my sister is going to stop calling me or my spouse is not going to praise me the way he did or is going to stop buying me the gifts that he Um, you know, buys me, you're not in love with those people. Those relationships are being run by fear. And and the last thing that I wrote down here in my points, what happens when we are seeking validation from outside of us and we are not able to give it to ourselves, we feel unhappy. So there's that lingering sadness, depression, that kind of once in a while visits you it's trying to tell you there's something wrong because emotions are just um uh a mayor that's telling you hey you're away from your higher self you're away from your true self so if you're feeling like you know sad you're like way far from it if you're feeling you know just a little bit down you don't know what's going on you are not here you're not in alignment you're out of alignment with your own true self. So all, all this happens and it makes your life inside of you, not outside of you, very unsatisfying. Where you feel like, I don't know what's wrong with my life. On paper, everything is perfect. I have a really good career. I have a really good partner. And, you know, everything is good. I am, I am very successful in terms of the world defined success, but I don't feel it. I don't feel happy because this is how you've been living for forever. As far as back you can remember, you don't even know how to live with your own validation. So you can't even tell if that is the problem. But I hope that these these uh, little uh, you know four points can help you pinpoint if that is something that's going on in your life. Do you bend backward just to please other people? And, you know, it's taught to us women all over the world in terms of like, you know, that's what a woman is and you're supposed to be kind and you're supposed to be do that, this or that. That's all. Those are all the ways uh, that at some point somebody decided to control us. Let's control half of the human population, which is all the women, by telling them they need to be certain way. But we don't need to learn that from anybody. If you close your eyes, you take a deep breath, you connect with your true self, you will know who you're supposed to be. Naturally, you'll be kind. Naturally, you'll be compassionate. Every single human is like that. No one needs to tell me who I need to be as a human. And just a few few weeks ago, I had a conversation with a wonderful woman and we're talking about one of the relationships she's um, she's struggling and exact same, uh, situation is going on. And she said, but Alia, am I not supposed to be flexible? So given that a woman who's flexible is supposed to be a good woman. So that is a woman who has completely abandoned herself and she's becoming a doormat and she doesn't even know what her programming is, that that is what will make me a good woman. 
Now you might say, oh, Alia, I'm not a doormat. I, I am not in that category, but I'm going to challenge you. Maybe you're not a doorman to your friends, to your, uh, you know, to your family, to like your coworkers, but are you a doormat to your kids? Are you a doormat to your spouse? Just be very careful in analyzing your own self. I see so many moms, especially moms who have a little like, you know, uh, older kids and their kids are not too little anymore. Their kids are abusing them all different ways and they're just like, oh, they're just kids and they don't know any better. So we take this validation from other people and we give it to our kids. Now my kid needs to validate me who's just 22 and somehow their opinion about me matters. So we are going to shift all of that for today. So let's get into where did we get just a little bit. Where did we get this thing that, you know, somebody needs to validate me? So it starts at childhood when we are very little, between zero to seven, we do need validation from outside. We just need to make sure, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right track? So there is a little bit of psychological dependency on our parents. It's just like when um, uh, we all have, you know, read that imprinting example in our early, uh, earlier grade science books where you know, this duck, the way the duck is walking, the ducklings, they walk the same way because they are learning. When we come into this body, yes, we do have that spiritual wisdom and everything, but our body needs to learn how things are in this part of the universe, in this dimension of the universe. So that's why we do have parents. That's why God created us in a way that we cannot live on our own. We need another adult to take care of us, at least for a good chunk of years. Otherwise, we will die. Human babies cannot survive on their own. And the reason God designed us that way, we do have a nervous system that, that is programmable. And between zero to seven, we are in hypnotic state. We are in theta wavelength. That's, that's how our brain is at that time. So everything is getting programmed into us. So. That is when, when I started walking, my parents are going to say, good job. That is so good. You can take another step. I need that outer encouragement just to get used to this body, just to learn about this body, to learn about this nervous system. So I am dependent on their validation that, oh, this time I put the spoon straight in my mouth and, you know, it's not drooling on the side. Our parents cheer us on, but this is what happens during that time. All of the authority goes to them. So I am always looking up to my parents. Hey, are they happy for me? Did I do a good job? Like when I got a good grade, are they happy? So many of us kids, and still there are, it will stay till eternity of human, uh, humankind. A lot of kids do really good in school because they just want the mom to say, you're such a smart kid. And if the moms don't change themselves, if they don't grow and learn these skills within themselves, we will continue having that lineage where a child is just seeking approval through good grades. Yes, it's good to have good grades, but that dependency is not healthy at all. So now let's say I'm, I'm uh, nine years old. I am still depending on my parents for validation. I am 15 year old. I'm still depending on my parents for validation. I am 50 years old. I am still depending on my parents for validation. Even though I'm an adult, I have my own kids. I do know who maybe I am. I have more self-awareness, but somehow there's a part of me that as soon as my parents start talking to me, I'm just like a chicken, like I'm just like a two-year-old and I don't know how to stand my grounds anymore. That is the emotional dependency that stays there when the authority is never shifting. So that is what's going to make us or help us validate ourselves. The shifting of that authority from our parents to us. And if parents are self-aware, for example, this is the stuff I have ever already learned. 
my son is nine at the moment, I'm already giving him the authority a little by little. And most likely by the age of 16, when he's going to be 16, my goal is to shift everything in his plate where he is validating himself in every single area of his life. But let's say my parents didn't know that. My, my parents didn't have this information. They didn't grow or develop themselves the way I did. So till this day, they want me to seek validation from them. And when that doesn't happen, it, it feels weird to them. Like why this kid is not seeking our validation? Once you learn this, you can do it for your kids. And you can give them a life skill that is going to make a huge difference in how they feel inside. It's, it's taking that burden off their shoulder. Unfortunately, we are taught like some, some very unhealthy things when it comes to relationships and whatnot. And one of them is this seeking other people as your authority, always seeking validation from them. And even if those are your parents, either we got that or we got rebellious kids and that's not healthy either. So we are learning how you become independent, emotionally independent and validate yourself. So the first would be, of course, changing the authority to where you are the authority in your life. You are the ultimate person in your life who says yes or no to every single thing. You might feel like because you're an adult, you're already doing that. You have a very independent life of your parents. But when I talk to my, um, <laughs> in a session, when I'm talking to my client and we are, we are focusing on, on something and they'll be like, oh, that's what the voices in my head is saying. I would ask them right away, is it moms or dads? First, they will say, no, it's, it's my voice. It talks in my tone. And then I ask again, is it moms or dads? And then they'll just pause and they'll say either mom or dads. So that means the authority still belongs to either mom or dad in your unconscious mind. Consciously, we all are living independent lives. But unconsciously, we are not. So even let's say you want to buy a really big house. And maybe your parents were never uh, in for bigger houses. They thought you should just live humble, always have a smaller house. And now here you're going, buying a 10-bedroom. There would be this voice talking to you in your head how you're wrong. That's not right. You're being greedy. You're just being a show-off. So that voice that is talking to us, unconsciously it belongs to one of our parents because that was their way of being so the authority is not in your uh like you know in your court or inside of you so this is how we shift it every time you hear that critical voice talking to you you just or it uh, you have that thought what would my mom say what would my dad say pause Ask yourself, what would I say about it? It's that easy. It's not hard at all. And I will share an example with you guys, which was one of the toughest thing I did in my life at some point in my journey. And it was just this easy. What would Alia do? What would Alia say? As you are pausing and you are switching that to you, slowly you're breaking up the pattern. You are not just changing your habitual thoughts, but you're also changing the neural pathways because the way we think, it creates a neural pathway. So physically, you start changing your mind when you change the way you think about things. So there was this one point I wanted to take. Um, uh, once I got divorced, I just asked myself how what kind of life I want to create for myself. And one of the things I wanted to do, I really wanted to travel uh, with my ex-husband and with my son. That was something I really wanted to do. I wanted him to experience still being with both of his parents because we are really good friends and really continue making those um, memories. But the culture that I come from or the family I come from, that's like something completely unheard of. But again, my vision said that's what I want to create. So the very first time we were traveling, literally, it was like I packed my bag, we got into the car, we are leaving. My son is so happy. And it just, there was a war going on in my head. 
what would my mom say? What would my dad say? What would my siblings say? Like there was literally a war going on in my head. And there was a part of me that just wanted to run away and be like, uh, I think I'm making a mistake. No, I shouldn't do that. Knowing what I know that in that moment, I was seeking other people validation. And in that exact moment, I was breaking away from it. I just asked myself, what would you do, Alia? What would you love to do? And the answer was very clear. I would want to go. So I didn't ask anybody to stop the car. We, we just went. And it was a start of a very, very beautiful, healthy ritual that we have created. And we continue to do it. So, but in that moment, I had to bring authority to me. No one else could have it. So wherever you are in your life, whatever you're doing, when you feel a little stuck, you're doubting yourself, check in with yourself. Is it mom or dad voice talking? What would you do? That is when you start to live as your true self. So bringing the authority home, that's the first one. And the second is building trust within yourself. Because every time we seek validation from somebody else, and we give them priority over us, we break our trust with ourselves. Even if it's it's this small, like, you know, let's say a friend calls me right now and the friend say, um, can you pick me up from the airport right now? And I have my day planned. If I drop everything and some of that stuff is important, if I'm just sitting home and I feel like, okay, I can go. But if I'm dropping everything just because I just want to show my friend how important she is for me, Instead of telling her, hey, you can Uber it. Uh, if I do that, I just broke trust with myself. We don't realize what are the little things we do every single day that break our trust with ourselves. So one of the very simple way to build, a uh, start building trust within yourself is doing, saying that you will do something and actually do it. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be like, I'm going to gym every single day at 5 a.m. It could be as small as I am going to brush my teeth every morning. If you already don't do that, or I am going to brush my teeth every night. Something that you already habitually do, attach it to. And every time when you actually brush your teeth, remind yourself, I trust myself more. So you're associating it with an activity you're already doing. So your unconscious mind is learning oh, we trust ourselves uh, more because I am doing this activity every single day, every single day, every single day. And when you say to yourself, like, you know, okay, today I'm going to give you all day off. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. So when somebody calls you and they're like, hey, can you go to the mall with me? And you say, no, actually today it's my day off with myself. Or you can just say, I have other things planned. When you say, stay true to yourself, you trust yourself more. It seems like a very small thing, but these small things build your own foundational relationship with yourself. And next time, it will be so much easier to validate yourself as well. Uh, the next one would be start emotionally supporting yourself. So let's say if I'm feeling sad, I'm going to feel like, can I just hug somebody? Can I please just hug? another human being, we right away go outside of us. And I know it does take learning the skill to um, self-sustain, to emotionally support ourselves. Yes, it takes time to build that, but you can do something right now. First, check in with yourself. How am I feeling? Sometimes we are so busy in our life that we don't even check in with ourselves how I'm feeling. And then once you know oh, this is how I'm feeling, I'm feeling sad right now, just ask yourself, is there something I can do for you? So you're having a direct conversation with yourself. You're being the facilitator for this relationship yourself. And you can always just hug yourself. Just hug yourself, kiss yourself, be with yourself in that moment. Instead of picking up the phone and calling somebody. And trust me, it's not an easy thing to do. Whatever I teach, I have actually uh, experienced it myself. When I am 
going through something, there's such an urge to just call anybody. Uh, I have a wonderful family. I can call anybody, but I don't let myself call. Till I have connected with myself, myself, whether it's going for a walk, whether just sitting there journaling, whether just closing my eyes and going into my inner world and asking, how are you doing? What is something I can do for you? Because if I don't connect with myself first and I go outward, I abandon myself in that moment. I did not validate my own feeling and I'm looking for somebody else to say, oh yeah, this is so bad. Oh my God, I'm so sorry you're going through this. How about I give that to myself first and then I reach out. Then I'm going to reach out as a very different version of me. So that is something you can do where you are emotionally supporting yourself and it is going to help you build that foundation of self-validation. You're not going to look for other people to feel sorry for you or say how hard things are for you. We all need to hear that at some point. First, give it to yourself and then call. And most likely by that time, you, you wouldn't even want to hear that because internally you would always be feel already be feeling better. Okay, the last one is a little bit challenging, especially if you're new to uh, self-development, if you're new to building a relationship with yourself, and that is talking in the mirror with yourself. It's not hard at all to do it, but it feels very hard to start it if you have never done it. So it's very easy. Look at yourself in the mirror, right in your eyes, and say, I love you. I see you. I hear you. I am here for you and I will always support you. Now, these are the words that I like to say to myself. You can say your own version or you can just stop at I love you. Because when you start to see yourself, you don't have the need for anyone else to see you. When you start hearing yourself, you don't have the need for anyone else to hear you. When you're reassuring yourself, hey, I am here for you every single day. You're not going to have the fear. What if people abandon you? So this way, just by doing this little act with yourself, you are repairing yourself on so many levels. And I can assure you, just do it for 21 days. Every time you pass through a mirror, whether it's your car mirror, your bathroom mirror, or you're in a mall or an office space, Whenever you pass through a mirror, just take a split second, look in your eyes, and just internally say, I love you. Just take that experiment, and you're going to feel very different after this 21 days are over. And reach out to me and tell me how it goes for you. So those are the four different ways you can start building that relationship with yourself where you're validating yourself on all these levels. But how would you know it that the process is complete? So um, when we praise each other, if I am praising you or you're praising me, we all have this, like, you know, really sweet feeling when somebody say, oh my God, I love the way you are, this or that. It feels good. And when someone says, you're the worst person in the world, what are you doing? What are you wearing? I don't even like your makeup. We feel bad. That's, that's a normal, general human response. But once you have done this growth work, once you have learned, truly embodied, and learned to validate yourself, they both would be neutral to you. So look for the signal when somebody praises you and it's neutral. It's not because you're blocking or because you're just so busy in your own thoughts. Genuinely, when somebody's saying, I love your shoes, I love the way you look, And it feels neutral. It's not feeling like, oh my God, they praised me. Or, oh my God, why they said that. All of that disappears. That is when this process would be complete. That means you have become the authority in your life. You're the one validating yourself. Whenever somebody does it, it's polite. It's kind on their part. But you're not in need of it. And you can respond by saying, thank you. Thank you for seeing that but you're not saying it from a place of like, oh my God, thank you for seeing my dress and being the first person to comment on it. Um, um, Just yesterday, 
I was outside. Um, I went to a bunch of places in the mall and I was wearing one of my favorite dresses and so many women commented on it. So many. And every time that comment came, it was just like, yes, of course. It didn't feel like, oh my God, somebody's seen me. Because I already saw myself, praised myself, validated myself. And whenever the truth is, when someone praises us, it's not about us. It's about who they are. If the person is generally praising. Some people just take these tricks uh, and tips from the book that, oh, when you praise somebody for what they are wearing, it will build a connection. And we all can tell. If you're really present, you can tell a fake praise versus a genuine praise. So if somebody is genuinely praising you, it's just about them. They're just a wonderful person. They have such a beauty in their eye that they see another person and they acknowledge it. It has nothing to do with you. In the same way, when someone sees that there's something wrong with you, it's just about them. So when we get so hung up on praise or hate or validation or not validation, it's actually all about the other person. But if you want to come out of that rat race that goes on in your mind, start validating yourself. It's not hard. Yes, it does require a little bit of your time, a few seconds here and there. But once you start doing it, once you get into the habit of validating yourself, it becomes very natural. And your life becomes very different. Internally, you feel whole and complete at all times. And then you can show up in your relationship with such a beauty, with such a compassion, with such a presence, because there's no need for other person to see you, hear you, or validate you. So this brings us to the conclusion of our talk today. I really hope that you learn something within you about yourself that is going to create a shift for you. And if this is the work that you're ready to do on a deeper level, and you really want to clean up all that is going in your mind, you can always reach out to me. And if you're watching this video, randomly on YouTube, just Google Alia the Love Coach, and I will be right here, ready to be your guide on this beautiful journey to coming home, to falling in love with yourself. So that is all for today, and I will see you all soon. Love you. Bye.